Yo, what's up? We're starting off this week's episode with a little gift from me to you, my dumb boomers. I mean, well, it wasn't yours to give, it was announced. Anyway, here are all the confirmed upcoming Steam sales and fest for the remainder of the year up until April 1st. Also, as a quick aside, we'll be covering the Tokyo Game Show next week as it's still ongoing and there hasn't been a whole lot of new announcements. Anyway, welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the latest gaming news from the last week. If you like what we do, consider helping us grow by subscribing to the channel. And also big thanks to everyone who supported us thus far. You've definitely made this more worthwhile, so let's keep it going with an update. Unity put out an open letter on Friday acknowledging that they've messed up. The letter was penned by Mark Witten, Unity Creates Lead, and opened simply with, I'm sorry. The letter acknowledges that they should have listened to developers and feedback, and that they need developers to make Unity what it has become. Imagine. Anyway, as a gesture of goodwill, Unity personnel will remain free and have no runtime fee. Additionally, the amount of money made before needing to switch to Unity Pro will be increased from 100k to 200k. Also, and this is shocking to even me, does no longer need to use the Made with Unity splash screen, which was literally the main draw for going to Unity Plus, meaning that the loss of Unity Plus is no longer a negative. Additionally, no game making less than a million dollars in the first 12 months will be subjected to the fee. As for the Unity Pro Enterprise, the runtime fee is still there, though modified. Devs will either pay a 2.5% revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. Both of these are self-reported from the user's own data. So good job, Unity. Maybe Ellie will actually get to play Silk Song. Wow. Ubisoft, the company who has failed to release Call and Bones, has announced that they will be developing another MMO, The Division 3, with massive entertainment. According to Ubisoft, the title is already in early development with the studio, Massive Entertainment, which if you don't know is the company who is already working on the other two Ubisoft games, Star Wars Outlaws, What is that? What the f*** is that? And Avatar, because there's an Avatar game for some reason. The studio is currently hiring, so I guess that's a thing that's coming. Though if Skull and Bones is anything to go by, it's hard to guess if the game will actually come out. In other development news, Criterion, the developers behind the newest Need for Speed games and the Spectacle Racer series Burnout, will now be focusing on Battlefield? Look, EA is flawless in their thinking, okay? The game devs who are fantastic at making street racing games, who single-handedly brought back Need for Speed from being a dead series, and make them work on a military shooter. And given how badly Battlefield 2042 did, maybe EA thought the series could be brought up to speed. Or maybe the other devs are just having burnout. So while the world was focused on Unity, another big story dropped from our pals at Microsoft in the dumbest way possible. Because of the FTC's legal battle against Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, Microsoft was ordered to upload any relevant documents, which were then published as part of public court records. But Microsoft forgot to redact the sensitive information before the court records were made public. And that means lots of good news for people like us who liked video games. However, fair warning, a lot of this information is likely scrapped or taken out of context or has greatly changed since its original conception. For hardware, there was an image of a midterm update to the Xbox codename Brooklyn, which had slightly better specs, was the same price as the Series X, and had no disc tray. There was also a new controller called the Bile? Zipple? Cousin Simple? Which would have haptic feedback, an accelerometer, and a swappable battery. There is also an Elliewood, which is obviously just a console made for me. Just for me. For games, there were a few. Of course, none of these have been announced, but there are some very interesting titles to note, such as Project Kabiki, <laughs> Oblivion Remaster, Doom Zero, and Project Platinum. But seeing as it's 2023, it's kind of hard to assume that any of these titles will be announced anytime soon. Other than that, it was leaked that Microsoft has been looking to buy Nintendo for a while now, actually. Will it ever happen? What do you guys think? I sort of want Microsoft to own Nintendo, because somehow I have a feeling that Nintendo would be less hateful towards their fans if Microsoft owned them. I don't even own an Xbox. I don't know why I'm such an Xbox fanboy. It's weird. It's not like they've never done anything badly. Oddly enough, I think I agree with Booster. I think Microsoft might actually make Nintendo a little bit better. We'll be covering the Tokyo Game Show next week as it's currently ongoing, but here are the games coming out this week. This week's Buried Alive Banger, a segment where we cover a game our community doesn't think has had enough attention, is called Estrella Six-Sided Dice Oracles. Do you like deck building games? Do you like Yu-Gi-Oh! Dungeon Dice Monsters? Do you like Slay the Spire? Then you'd like this game. 
Anyway, it's exactly that. Play the Spire mixed with dungeon dice monsters. Expect a brutal roguelike adventure as you get slapped by Lady Luck. And here's our schedule for the week. We'll be having a very special presentation on the 28th where we'll be doing a very special stream playing a special version of the very special The VTuber Summit with their special developer, Ren Avenham. Also, we'll be playing more Mortal Kombat and Baldi's Goat 3. Finally, a very special thank you to our members. As always, we appreciate the support you give us and to all of our viewers, we love you guys so much. So until next time, goodbye. Bye.